About a month ago, I made a video called The X-Titans, which was a story and set of designs of X-Men Teen Titan fusion characters. And in that episode, I mentioned a bunch of different villains that were villains made up of X-Men Teen Titan villain fusions. I didn't draw any of them in the video, and some of them only got brief mentions, but it seemed like a lot of people were really into the idea of me making an actual full episode for those villains. So I put that idea up to the vote the other day, and that just dumpstered everything else. I was shocked. There were some other video ideas in there that I thought for sure were gonna win. But I'll probably still do a bunch of those at some point anyway. But the point is, today we're doing the X-Titans Villains episode. I've written a story for these characters, I'm designing five of them, and maybe some characters from my past Marvel DC Fusion episodes will show up and or just get mentions in this story. But you don't have to have seen any of the other episodes to get this one. Just makes it a little bit more fun. So if you're excited to get more stories in this Marvel DC universe I've been building, make sure to hit the like button. Always helps with algorithm stuff and getting YouTube to push out videos more. But for now, we can actually jump into the story, starting off with the Magnaterra design. Let's go! Tara Lencher stared across the river at the Illuminous Corporation compound, sitting far too peacefully on a small island. Just the sight of it shot flashes of rage through her mind, but she remained composed. She imagined the whole place as it would be an hour from them, a crumpled heap of rubble. She turned and looked on her team, or at least the members that were present, all waiting on their first move. Despite their assorted flaws and past failures, Magna Terra was proud of them. Her time working under Slade Thanson had shown her just how important it was to fight alongside a group with unified ideals, something she and Slade had never truly had. This, her new team, the so-called Sisterhood of Metahumans, were all willing to do whatever it took to fight what she considered the good fight and make the world a place where metahumans were given the respect they deserved as the future of humanity. It's time to make our grand entrance. Saber Mammoth, Jinx Strike, as soon as you find light, you bring him to the main hangar. I want him to watch as Cinder Knot tears his creation to shreds. She turned and raised her hands, which started to glow, sparking yellow. Then we end him. The earth beneath the team started to rumble, then a platform of rock lifted out of the ground and floated them all into the air. They soared across the water. Terra couldn't wait to see the horror in Bolivar Light's eyes as his metahuman crushing monstrosity was reduced to scrap. But of course this would all go much smoother if their mission wasn't interrupted, for once, by a certain team of frequent interlopers. Unfortunately, Terra didn't see their absence as likely for long, but luckily she had an inside eye keeping tabs on them. As Magna Terra and her team hovered over the island, alarms started to wail. Two massive cannons lurched out of the ground and pointed towards them. Terra wasn't phased. She turned to her oldest ally, the brawling brute behind her, and asked, Are you ready, Cinder Knot? He nodded and slammed two stone fists together. As the cannons below charged up, she raised a finger at Cinder. He floated off the rock. With a flick of her wrist, Cinder Knot fired through the air at the first cannon. The weapon erupted in an earth-shaking explosion, and then, completely unharmed, Cinder rolled through the collision and charged towards the second cannon, which took aim on him. Terra smirked as she lowered the rest of her team to the ground, but just as they landed, a message came through on her communicator. It read, simply, the X-Titans are moving. Cindernaut continued to rampage through everything the compound could send. Cannons, tanks, guards wielding hard light weapons specifically built to combat metahumans. Cinder was a wrecking ball, unfazed by it all. But his successful smashing of their current foes didn't change the fact that they had much more formidable ones on the way. Terra kept that information to herself, for now. Saber Mammoth and Jinx Strike bolted from Terra's side to go find Light. She just hoped they'd find him before the X-Titans arrived. 
Too much of her team had personal grudges with the Titans for them to stay clear-headed when Nightclops' team arrived. Cinder continued his smashing as Terra marched towards the six-story tall doors of the main hangar. She raised her hands and thrust two massive boulders out of the pavement and hurled them forth. They blew through the doors, revealing inside the vile prototype she was so eager to destroy. The first so-called Sentinel of Light. All around it were guards who trained their guns on her and began firing. She pulled her boulders in front of her, easily blocking the blasts. She could have taken the guards herself rather quickly, but she figured Cinder would want the fun for himself, and she was happy to grant it to him. She glanced back across the yard to him as he finished off the last tank. Perfect timing. Cindernaut, I've got some more for you. His stony jaw shifted into a grin. She once more hovered him into the air, whipped him over at sound-breaking speeds, and hurled him into the hangar, bowling through five guards in an instant. Cindernaut was the one teammate Terra knew she could always count on. He had no personal vendettas or grudges, so far as she knew. He was just a loyal follower who loved to smash things. And his body, being predominantly made of rock, made him the perfect ally for Magnaterra, whose abilities allowed her to levitate and control minerals with her mind. Terra lowered her shields as Cinder smashed through the final guards, and just as he was wrapping up, Mammoth and Strike flung through some nearby doors, carrying the Man of the Hour. They leapt over to Terra and tossed to the ground before her, Bolivar Light. But before she could even open her mouth to begin a monologue at him about how vile he was, another voice rang across the yard. Terra, stop! Terra could practically feel her teammates losing focus on the task at hand as she looked across the yard to see that the meddling ex-Titans had arrived. Don't interfere, Scott, Terra said, still seething from the fact that her eyes on the inside hadn't given more warning of the Titan's arrival. We want the same thing here. It's in your best interest to let us follow through. Not like this, Nightclops said in a voice that Terra could only hear as self-righteous and ignorant. We can convince people that metahumans aren't a threat to the world, but not by being terrorists and destroying and killing whoever and whatever we want. If you kill Light, you're hurting our cause more than you're helping it. Terra sighed. We're not having this debate again, Scott. Try to stop us if you must, but this is happening, whether you want it to or not. I think you know that's not true. Star Phoenix. The green and orange clad hero next to Nightclops thrust her hands out, but nothing happened. But of course, Terra knew that it wouldn't. Friend Scott, something is wrong. She must be blocking my powers somehow. Terra smirked knowingly, but before she could even give an order to her team, Saber Mammoth and Jinx Strike charged towards the Titans, both of them leering specifically at the stocky green ball of claws at the front of the pack. See, Terra had met Strike and Mammoth the same day that the Titans had met Logan Garfield, when they'd all invaded a metahuman experiment facility called the Weapons Hive. All three of these metahumans had been experimented on by a twisted man named Striker Blood, who'd intended to enhance them, then mind control them as his personal guards. Logan had been the most successful experiment in terms of enhancing his abilities, but Blood's mind control had never worked on Logan. The night of their invasion, Logan had left with Scott and the X-Titans without even trying to free Strike and Mammoth from Blood's mind control, which simply added to the years of bad blood between them all. Luckily, Terra had seen to rescuing Strike and Mammoth, and the two eagerly joined ranks with Terra after she allowed them to do as they pleased with Striker Blood. Cindernaut also charged into the fight, and Terra quickly turned back to light. It seems I don't have time to tell you just how vile an addition to this earth you have been, but at least you can watch while I- Terra stopped as she noticed his hands behind his back fidgeting with something. She grabbed his arm and pulled it forward, just in time to see as he pressed a final button on a device in his hand. And that final button read, Activate. A clanking of metal and a whir of machinery took both teams' attention as the massive, humanoid mech 
the sentinel of light illuminated and turned its eyes on them all. Cannon of light fired from the sentinel's eyes into the cluster of brawling metahumans, and they all scattered. The blast hit the earth and exploded, sending chunks of rock hurtling across the yard. Terra thrust her hands up and caught all the debris midair, keeping it from hitting anyone. Bolivar light fled in the chaos, but Terra didn't have time to care. She whipped back around and hurled all the debris at the mech. The rocks barely seemed to do anything, clanging off the thing's steel shell like pebbles. It stomped towards her, eyes flaring up again. Terra flew herself out of the way as another blast rang out. She looked the mech up and down and noticed a few slightly unprotected spots. Strike! Mammoth! Cinder and I will keep it distracted. You need to get to its neck to disable it. Strike and Mammoth both charged in. Terra hurled rocks one by one at the Sentinel, trying to keep its head turned from her team. But it wasn't working. The mech started to turn towards Strike with eyes flaring up, but before it could attack, a beam of energy fired from the ground at its head, knocking its shot just off course. Booyah, comrades! Silosis, Stormbird, and Logan from Scott's team were jumping in on the fight. Together, they managed to distract the thing enough for Strike and Mammoth to get to its legs and start climbing their way up its body. Mammoth struggled a bit as he was more of a brawler, but Jinx Strike was a nimble acrobat, and her glowing, pink-hexed claws dug into the Sentinel's armor just enough to allow her to climb up its body with ease. But when Strike got too close to its neck, the Sentinel swung an arm around to grab her. But quickly, Silosis' voice boomed from the ground. It's time for the Furball Special! As he hurled Logan straight at the arm. Logan drilled his claws into the Sentinel's hand and threw it off course. Jinx Strike shot Logan a skeptical, but somewhat appreciative look as she finished her climb to the neck. Her claws lengthened further and she slashed a flurry of swipes into the neck, sending wires and metal flying in every direction. The Sentinel slowed. It twitched and lurched and sparks sprung from it. Both teams moved aside as the bot crumbled to its knees. The lights faded from its eyes and finally it collapsed to the ground and shook the island. Terra and Scott's teams continued tearing into the bot, making sure it was totally out of commission. It was messier than Terra had hoped, but step one of their mission was accomplished. She whipped around to look for light and quickly spotted him. Nightclops and Star Phoenix were both with him. This is over, Terra! You've destroyed his Sentinel and given us enough time to make a case against him and his company, but if you kill him, you'll only be justifying his work. Now leave, please! I'm sorry, Scott, but I can't do that. And frankly, you have no say in the matter. Terra flashed a look at Star Phoenix and nodded. Star grabbed Nightclops and lifted him into the air. What? Star, what are you doing? Her skin suddenly shifted from orange to blue. As she smirked and said, Oh, sorry, handsome, wrong star. My sister's actually taking a power nap right now, and uh, I think it's time for you to do the same. The transformation finished, and who was once thought by the Titans to be Star Phoenix shifted into her true form of Star Steak. She hurled Nightclops against a wall, instantly knocking him unconscious. She grabbed Light and flew him over to Magnaterra. Despite Star Steak not giving proper warnings earlier in the mission, Terra was once more thrilled to have her on the team. See, Star Phoenix and Star Steak had been alien princesses in a royal family born with different abilities. Star Steak had been meant for the throne as the older sister, but the blue skin she was born with had unsettled the population enough to deem her younger sister as the true heir to the throne. But when Star Steak eventually discovered that her blue skin came with the extra ability to shapeshift, she betrayed her sister, jettisoned her to Earth, and took her place. 
Of course, eventually she was discovered and had to flee the planet coming to Earth to see what Star Phoenix had made of her life on the primitive planet. Soon after, she met Magna Terra, and a friendship blossomed from there. Now, Starstique was an essential ally in Terra's cause. The blue alien dropped light before Terra. She sneered at him and raised boulders all around him. For crimes against the metahuman community, I sentence you to death, Bolivar Light. He smiled snidely. By all means, monster, go right ahead. If you think the world will side with you after this, then go ahead and finish me off. We are the future of this world. We don't need anyone to side with us. Well, you'd better hope you're right, because my will dictates that as soon as I die, all my research and programs and schematics will be released open source to the entire world. So anyone will be able to make metahuman slaying weaponry. Who do you think they'll go after first once you've killed the man who tried to save everyone from the metahuman threat? Terra froze. Finally, Light had said something that gave her pause. At least with the Luminous Corporation being the only ones with these weapons, the problem was somewhat contained. Her entire body was tensed, as every fiber of her being wanted to crush Light. But for now, she could see that that wasn't an option. The rocks around her lowered. His sneer grew. There. I thought you would see it my way! He was rocketed into the air as the earth beneath him shot upward. She may not have been able to kill him, but in the least she could give him a good scare. As light soared through the air, Terra looked over at Scott's teammate Stormbird. You'd better catch him, Titan. Stormbird flew up after him as Terra ordered her team to retreat. She took one last look at the shredded Sentinel of Light and all of the destroyed tanks and taken down guards to at least appreciate something they'd accomplished. But now, stuck in her mind, was the aggravating thought that Scott may have some semblance of a point. If Light's work would eventually end up in the hands of the public, maybe, just maybe, Magna Terra would need more of them on her side. Still conflicted, Terra and her team flew off, ready to prepare for their next move in the progress of the rise of the metahumans. You know, like what happened with the Justice League Avengers Fusions episode where I then did a Villains episode next? I think the villains turned out better than the heroes once again. I think I still like the story better in the X-Titans episode, but I definitely like the designs of the villains better. But of course, if you haven't seen the first X-Titans episode, make sure to go check that out. That one was a lot of fun too. And make sure to check out a bunch of my other Marvel DC Fusion episodes. And make sure to check out my Biomet Kayla episode, which is a similar format to this, but with my own original characters. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe because I do tons of stuff like this and other kinds of videos putting characters from one thing into other things, lots of nerdy, fun pop culture art and stories. But that's all for today. I'm Christian Pearson. This has been Popcross Studios, home of the nerdiest art videos on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and I will see you all in the next episode on Monday, which will probably be my first spooky, Halloween-y, October kind of focused episode. Get excited for that. All right, everybody, I'll see you later. Goodbye.